as long as there is chaos and instability in Somalia itself. Paul Wood, BBC News, in the Gulf of Aden. Now, the UK suffers comparatively little from the extremes of weather that afflict so much of the world. So the flooding that's hit northwest England is all the more shocking for those affected. It's some of the worst the country has seen, and it is now clear it has claimed the life of a police officer. He was directing people away from a bridge when it was simply swept away beneath him. At least 200 people have now been rescued from their homes in Cumbria. The BBC's Danny Savage is there. The rain that's fallen here has now filled the rivers of Cumbria. Huge volumes of water racing towards the sea, destroying much in its path. To the astonishment of people in Workington, the River Derwent even smashed its way through solid bridges, which have been local landmarks for years. But when the torrent was at its height, this bridge gave way, just as a police officer was trying to keep people off it. An eyewitness who was too shocked to go on camera has told the BBC he was walking on the bridge at about six o'clock this morning when he felt it move. He quickly got off and stopped several vehicles, including a bus, from crossing it. But when he next turned round, he realised the bridge had gone, along with a police officer who'd been standing just a few feet away. A rescue operation was soon launched, but almost inevitably, it ended a few hours later with the discovery of the officer's body on a beach a few miles away. In the town of Cockermouth, a dramatic rescue operation continued. Nearly 24 hours after the river here burst its banks, RAF helicopters were still overhead. They clear the house, clear the roof. People were being winched to safety, not from remote country houses, but from homes in the middle of town. And this is the main street, navigable only by boat. We're just working our way down that one. Using one is the only way to see the full extent of the damage. Normally bustling streets are ir- St. Petersburg. Scientists in Geneva have begun the process of restarting the world's largest atom smasher. The Large Hadron Collider is a massive circular tunnel underground built to answer fundamental questions about the creation of the universe. It will recreate conditions just after the Big Bang. It could show things human beings have never seen before. The six billion dollar project broke down last year. As Palab Ghosh reports, it has suffered several setbacks. Two, one, zero. Nothing. Yes, sir. And so began the switch on of the world's largest machine. Forty minutes later, a beam of subatomic particles had completed the first circuit of the Large Hadron Collider. By smashing particles together at close to the speed of light, researchers hope to recreate the conditions that existed shortly after the Big Bang and roll back the frontiers of our understanding of the universe and how it was created. But nine days after the LHC was switched on, it broke down. So what went wrong? First, an electrical fault developed in one of the joints connecting the superconducting magnets. That resulted in a leak of liquid helium that keep the magnets cold, which meant that temperatures rose and damaged 53 magnets. It was supposed to be the greatest science experiment ever, and it's certainly the most expensive. The Large Hadron Collider, designed to recreate the Big Bang Theory with colliding particles, has so far cost nearly $10 billion and counting. Scientists are hoping to catch sight of the theorized but never seen Higgs boson particle. The so-called God particle that gives matter its mass. Yes, sir. But within days of kicking off last year, the Hadron Collider broke down. A helium leak in the cooling system took about a year to repair. And the latest hiccup? A piece of crusty French bread that found its way into the collider's inner workings, disrupting work for weeks. So coincidence or something more? Well, according to two physicists, the culprit may be the Higgs boson particle traveling back in time to destroy itself. Professor Holger Beck Nielsen explains his theory. It would look as if the future has an influence on what happens today or yesterday. So it would look as if some effect from the future goes back to us today. 
Professor Nielsen says the Higgs boson particle may be so abhorrent to nature that it ripples back in time to sabotage the machine that created it. Still, Professor Nielsen doesn't think the Higgs boson particle managed to place a bit of baguette to stop the Hadron Collider. I think some of these are <laughs> more like <laughs> caused by, by media interest than by, uh, by uh, really uh, the God in quotation mark in our model. But as the Large Hadron Collider gears up for yet another try on Monday, you can't help but wonder. Atika Schubert, CNN, London. The position to which you have just elected me is a new one. And I shall take office on the 1st of January 2010. The Lisbon Treaty wanted to instill greater continuity and coherence in the work of the European Council of Heads of State and Government. Six monthly presidencies had the advantage of involving all 27 member states in the work of the Union. The disadvantage was, was, a, lack of, was a lack of perspective. It's my firm intention to ensure that our work develops over a long-term period. A perspective that goes beyond six months will allow us to be better organised where the major multi-annual dossiers are concerned, such as the financial perspectives and the Lisbon strategy. I also think that going back to our roots in the European Council could help us to discuss from time to time, in an, an informal and open way, the big questions of the European project. I'm thinking more specifically of the economic and social agenda, and this is a particularly urgent matter because of the environmental and energy challenges we face and, our, and the aspira aspirations we have for greater security and justice for all our fellow citizens. We're living through exceptionally difficult times. The financial crisis and its dramatic impact on employment and budgets, the climate crisis which threatens our very survival. A period of anxiety, uncertainty and lack of confidence. Yet these problems can be overcome by a joint effort in our, and between our countries. 2009 is also the first year of global governance with the establishment of the G20 in the middle of the financial crisis. The climate conference in Copenhagen is another step towards the global management of our planet. Our mission, our presidency, is one of hope, supported by acts and by deeds.